Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shenanigans. We've got two of my faves in the studio with me today. You follow her as the talk of shame on IG and TikTok and know her from Sirius XM's Reality Checked and as the host of the Pop Crime Podcast. So I'm ready to Kiki with Kiki Monique. How are we doing? Good. Let's Kiki about it. How have I never said that before? I know. <laughs> <laughs> also with us today, Bravo historian and host of So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey, actor, comedian, and podcaster, Ryan Bailey. What up? How was Richella? I'm oh, sorry, Coachella. <laughs> sorry, my bad. My bad. No, I did it. Very different. Um, we'll get into that because I do want to fill you guys in, but... Before we do, I feel like there is a lot to cover today. So there's been a lot of stuff for the Bravo fans this week. I saw that some people online have compared it to the Red Wedding, if anyone's a (laughs) Game of Thrones fan out there. Okay. Um, So in the Real Housewives of Potomac world, we got news that Robin said she was not asked back for next season. And I feel like this might be the first time a housewife has been so transparent about that decision. It's usually, you know, they try to make an excuse or something else. And she waited weeks, it seems like, because that rumor had been out there forever because of Candace leaving. Yeah. So I was shocked that it that it took this long for her to come out well, with Well, she it. said she wanted to, like, maintain the integrity of the reunion. She wanted people to watch the reunion without yeah. knowing that ahead of time. I feel like it's also a smart move because you could always get asked back or on an ultimate girls trip or something like that. And, you know, you don't want to put a bad taste in the network's mouth. Maybe you're not their cup of tea for next season, but you never know what else is out there. So... Yeah, and Robin doesn't want to leave the Bravo world. I mean, yeah. this is no. her bread and butter. Yeah. And she just opened that, or she's about to open that med spa. She needs a vehicle <laughs> to promote it. That's why, I mean, <laughs> still, I mean, Lisa Rinna's wine. Rinna wine. She didn't have Beverly Hills to promote it on this yeah. past season. So they have these businesses that it, like, really helps. I mean, she has a successful podcast. I'm just curious, then, how that affects Giselle, because it's going to be really interesting to watch her without mm-hmm. Robin. And I think it's going to bring new things out of her, just like we saw with Erica Jane this past season of Beverly Hills. Yeah. I think it's going to be like Teddy 2.0, you know? Like- oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also heard that NECA was possibly let go as well. And now Candace is pregnant. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's NECA deserved another chance. A lot of people deserve another chance, but, you know, it was like the luck of the draw of being on a really disjointed season. So, unfortunately, it seems like they just made sweeping moves across the board and say, let's just completely start fresh. I'm, you know, Dr. Wendy is safe, right? It sounds like, I mean, we haven't heard anymore, so... I mean, that's why, like, you can't just start from scratch on that show, but yeah. it is wild yeah. for that much information. And then Candace to announce the pregnancy on the same day, which is so exciting. But part of me is like, I would Woof. really kind of like to see that. Yeah. I mean, right? we've been wanting, you've been watching her journey this whole time. And for her to now be actually having the baby, you know, I want to see it. Yeah. I mean, and maybe you'll see it after, you know, like no one got Lala and I's pregnancies, but you got the after. So you never know what's in the future for these ladies, but... I mean, listen, I just watched a vat of Lala's uh, potential donors yeah. on this yeah. week's episode. So I've seen a lot of the process. <laughs> yes. I want to get into that as well, too. Um, OK, so keeping it in the Housewives. Real Housewives of Miami. Alexia's husband, Todd, blindsided her with a divorce filing. Real Housewives of Orange County. Jennifer Armstrong had a people story come out about her engagement. No, Jennifer Pedronti. Wait, oh. Jennifer, so Jennifer, that that other one, she was already off the show. Jennifer Pedronti is the gotcha. new one. She got okay. engaged to Ryan. I got the Jennifers mixed up. Um, And then Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Very personally upset by this because I've now learned that Crystal will not be returning. And I just want to give a little note on that. I think that is a huge mistake. I think she had a great season. I feel like they haven't had as successful of a new hire since Crystal. She brought... Just something so fresh and different to the show that I absolutely loved watching. And obviously, she's a good friend of mine, so she will definitely be missed. But I hope it's not the last we see of her. I'm just 
very bummed when I saw that. I was like, no. Yeah, what did you think? Did I you? did not think they were going to make any changes in Beverly Hills. I mean, look, I wanted Anna Marie Ugh. to say too, though. So yeah. yeah, I remember watching you. I yeah, heard you that were... was happening, but, but you never know. Well, listen, even after that firing, then Anna Marie shoots off on social <laughs> right. and is like, karma. And I was like, oh my God, it's like a Taylor Swift beef, like, <laughs> like song lyrics. And I was like, my God, if we could just bottle this energy. But I'm bummed about Crystal because yeah. three seasons in, I thought she had a really good season, a really good reunion performance. And I also think she's somebody that I consider a reliable narrator mm -hmm. character. Yeah. Where you have her with Sutton, who can be a little off in the ether. And then you have Garcelle <laughs> on one side. You have Kyle, Erica, and wherever Dorit is. But I thought it was like a really good Ugh, pairing that I would I love to have seen another season. Yeah. yeah. I'm very bummed about that. What so. do you think about Ilaria Baldwin potentially joining? That is never going to happen. Her Wouldn't husband it, is about to face jail. Wouldn't it be amazing time. though? You have <laughs> you have Alec Baldwin having scenes with like PK and Mauricio. Oh my god! You know, like love being like it would be amazing. Of so, course. So I mean, what does next season leave for Mauricio? You know, what do you think there? Well. I think he's going to save all his good stuff for his own. Yes, show. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to save this for Netflix. Yeah. Like, it really, <laughs> buying Beverly Hills, it really, I watched the entire thing over a weekend and it was like, I'm team Bravo. Like yeah. I bleed Bravo, but it was shocking to see how different they approached it and uh -huh. how I felt like we were given just a little bit more that I was so, I felt like I knew the daughters more oh, on yeah. that show than I ever did in 13 seasons of Beverly Hills. Yeah. Agreed. But yeah, is Mauricio gonna just be like wandering around in the back of the house because they still live together? Right. I mean, I mean, where have we ever even... say, seen a show that people still live together after they break up? Well, I say, mean, that's not... crazy. That doesn't happen on Bravo. <laughs> but why would, do you think he'll even show up? Does he have a purpose or does Kyle just go and do her own thing now and he doesn't need to be part of the narrative? And is Morgan Wade going to be part of that narrative? Right. I hope so. I hope so. Well, my theory is that in my weird, twisted brain is that this is the season. Don't boo me at home or roll your eyes. I think they bring Freddie Mellencamp back. T sorry, Teddy. I call her Freddie. <laughs> I think they're going to bring her back because they want to keep Kyle in the fold. Oh. Okay. They want to surround her with people that she really trusts and has real yeah. relationships. And we know that's a real relationship. So I think they're going to throw her potentially into the mix. Okay. I'm not saying I agree with that. I, I actually I wouldn't mind like seeing that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I was sad also when Teddy, because she's been a friend of mine for so many years too, when she left the show, I'm just like, damn it. So I would but like love you to said, see her there, back. There's no ending in Bravo. No. There's just like yeah. So breaks. many opportunities, mm -hmm. for sure. I also just want to say um, to everyone out there who has asked how I'm doing in light of all of this news, thank you for your concern. Um, I appreciate it. I'm doing, you know. <laughs> oh my God. I'm doing, I'm doing okay. It's been it's been a rough one, but Literally, I feel like like every first comment is like, how is Sheena taking this? By the way, it is like we're really plowing the joke into the ground. But I will say the first the Potomac news hit, I was like, how oh, is she? How's is Sheena, Sheena doing you know, with this? She loves Potomac. But I feel like you guys have probably had a harder time. <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoy days like that. I mean, I get heart palpitations. Well, Kiki, Kiki does something amazing where she's up at the crack of dawn. And like, I was just talking about Kiki today with Alyssa over at Sirius. And I was like, you know, just the she's so comfortable showing her face. And like, she's a trusted voice, yeah. I think, that you can get your news from. But I get scared of that stuff. I'm good behind a microphone, but we need those trusted people like Kiki where you're like, oh, I'll go to her for news. Totally. And there's, a, there's humor in it, but it's never... It's, it's reporting more than sometimes what I can do is snarky. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a real need for that of people that you really trust to go to. Yeah, for sure. Well, on that note, we're going to take our first little break and then we'll be back to talk about Coachella, Vanderpump, so many more things. <laughs> be right back. And now that we've taken care of our allergies, let's just take care overall of our health. Nurex is a digital healthcare platform that makes it easy to get the expert healthcare you deserve at every step of your journey. We know that everybody is different. So Nurex provides treatment and care that's personalized to you. Through life's changes and transitions, the Nurex experts are here to help. They have licensed medical providers who possess in-depth knowledge and expertise in a range of common health concerns helping patients find the right treatment options based on their preferences and health history. So there is no more one-size-fits-all approaches, only effective, tailor-made solutions to help you make informed choices about your health with care offerings like birth control, anti-aging prescription care, and treatment for common mental health concerns. 
all tailored to your unique history and goals. And if you are someone who takes birth control, taking control of your reproductive health starts with Nurex. Their medical team is here to help with a wide range of reproductive and sexual health care needs. I know it's not always easy to access birth control, so they are helping their patients take back their autonomy with fast and affordable expert care. Thanks to Nurex for sponsoring this podcast. Taking control of your health starts here. Go to Nurex.com slash good as gold to get started. That's N-U-R-X dot com slash good as gold. Results may vary. Not offered in every state. Medications prescribed only if clinically appropriate. Consultation required. Okay, so how are we doing today? In light of all of that news, how was everyone's weekend? I moved, so that was like... Oh, that's oh, yeah, fun. I watched Kiki's move video. <laughs> she uh, had a moving company, and she's laying there. Wait, was it Roadway? Uh, yes. Yes, the best, They're the right? Best. Yeah. I want to get successful enough where I can get a moving company. Where I mean, it did look uh-huh. amazing. She had a guy with a refrigerator, it seemed like, <laughs> oh, on yeah. his back. <laughs> And I was incredible. like, this is incredible. Um, no, it was good. Yeah. I got actually LASIK surgery on Thursday. Oh. Really? Yeah. I So this is the first time I can actually see without my glasses. Okay. Oh. And so it's been, it's a whole new world. Yeah. I'm was saying. it scary? It kind of was. It was, it was weird. They just like numb the eye. They put you under this thing. They prop open your eye <sighs> and you don't feel it, but you really, you, you can see something scraping your eyeball oh my and you just don't feel it. And I'm just like, if I make one wrong move here. Right. And but I was so excited because it was a doctor where in the hallways it looked like he had done Brad Pitt's eyes and Kelly Clarkson's eyes. And I'm okay. like, I am in the right place. Totally. If if I had seen Tom Sandoval on there, I would have been out of there. <laughs> but I <laughs> I trust Here's the problem. I have the same eye doctor as Tom Sandoval. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but he did tell me that there is a zero percent chance you go blind. Like it just doesn't happen. Yeah. But I still, I'm like, I'm a contact girly. I just put them in and take them out every day. And see, I can't. I mean, I, I, I couldn't do it. And as I get older, it gets worse. And I'm, I did monovision. So mm-hmm. one is for distance. One is for so I don't have to ever do readers or anything. Yeah. But I guess it takes like a couple of weeks for your brain to adjust to it as like one field of vision. Gotcha. This is so exciting for your audience. <laughs> um, that it would be a great storyline on Vanderpump. You know? <laughs> Sheena well, gets no. LASIK. So here's the thing. I said this to Brittany back in the day. I said, what if we had a newlyweds moment like Jessica Simpson? Do you remember when she went and got LASIK and then had the blindfold on and she went to a restaurant after? I was like, Brittany, what if we both got LASIK and then just like went to Villa Blanca <laughs> after because it was right around the corner from the doctor? But Well, maybe she could have seen uh, maybe about Jackson. Maybe on the Oh. Anyway, but speaking of eyes, I will say I switched to daily contacts recently, which was very beneficial at Coachella because the amount of dirt this weekend in my eyes, up my nose, I was just like, it was so freaking windy. It was so cold. You have the Coachella flu because I went to like 13 Coachellas in my day. And now. that week after, it would always just be just the dust and just the amount you're up and partying. It was just so much. So I did it right. And the last two years I've left on day three. So I've started with an event, I've ended with an event, and I've left on day three. So this year, it was so fun because before we even went to the festival, we went to this dope party with my Smirnoff fam. And (laughs) it was cool. It was like this really fun activation they had near the festival. It was like the corner of Oasis and Highway 111. And they had a glitter bar. Let me tell you, as someone who just recently moved and my jewels and glitter are... God knows where. I was very happy because I'm a glitter okay. girly for the festivals. So is Brock a glitter guy? He did get some jewels. He did, but also Jaden Smith performed, and watching this kid grow up to be at a Smirnoff event with him was just so cool. And he's so talented, and he was so sweet. So that was really fun. And then I was thinking about it as I'm watching him perform. I'm like. Speaking of growing up, like I feel like I grew up drinking Smirnoff. It was very much a full circle moment for me because I'm like, I'm remembering back to my first Hollywood apartment when I turned 21, my first Coachella's back in the day. And whether it was a Smirnoff ice or like the Smirnoff number 21 vodka, which I would mix with Crystal Light, still highly recommend. (laughs) (laughs) But now I'm at Coachella, getting to work with them. And it's just so cool when I get to partner with brands I 
legitimately love. Mm-hmm. Well, I, listen, I've, as a Vanderpump viewer, uh, I've noticed every scene with you has a Schmiernoff oh, yeah. moment. That's my shit. You brought the Schmiernoff to the one party in yeah. the background with you and Brock at the Marina Del Rey place. It's just lined with Schmiernoff. <laughs> so much so that I was like, do they have an issue? Like, there's just Schmiernoff just up there. And then I was like, I think there might be, uh, <gasps> this is Sheena's favorite drink or it something. It is. No, it has been since college, since I was legal to drink. There was even a deleted scene Season 10, I think. Yeah, it was last season. Me, Brock, and Raquel go to a pregame at Schwartz's, and it was in the never before scene. And I walk in with a brown paper bag and a Smirnoff ice, like a 40 ounce, because that was how Schwartz and I first bonded on the set of a Pepsi commercial in like 2010. Okay. So, well, pre Vegas. Pre, oh my God. <laughs> you know, wait, while, I know too much about Vanderpump. I'm, so this is not fair for you. No, no, I, no. But while we're on that, I did see he said in an interview or on a podcast or something, he was like, I give the kiss a five. It was platonic. It was whatever. I'm like, first of all, that actually is a perfect rating because if you were trying to give 10 and I'm giving zero, then we end up at a five. That equals out, yeah. And mm-hmm. also, he said he was hammered. So, how would you even be able to remember yeah. to give it a number? Sloppy drunk. Uh, but I'm yeah. like, I wanted no part of this. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you don't you get can, to rate me. Like. You give yourself a five. Like, I give it a zero because I didn't want it to be good. Shots fired. Shorts is, come on. Are you kidding me? Please. Just so, so weird. Just but tell I'm like, me in season 12, there, it's not going to come out you made out with Sandoval, is it? Oh, oh my, my God. God. The pause. The pause. Oh. I'm kidding. Okay, nice. <laughs> oh, my God. But wait till the reunion. No, oh, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but also, okay, speaking of Coachella, did you see that Taylor Swift herself was there? She was at Neon Carnival when James played her song. I can't get over it. I looked up and I was like, oh, my God. Cruel Summer, Taylor Swift, like right there. And that was the scene that the lip reader was doing too. Did what, you see what, the, No, oh, I didn't see it? what, it, what oh, they say. The lip reader said, this is a really good DJ. I can't believe <laughs> well, this. Well, she was like singing along to her own song. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, woo! It would be great Wait. if it was like, top, top man is a bad man. And like Taylor Swift is like macking with Travis. That would have been incredible. But that's got to be, so, I mean, listen, all joking aside with DJ James Kennedy, that really is cool when somebody like works hard enough and you see them keep working and keep working. Yeah. And that's like a big event. Like I was watching like DiCaprio go into that thing. Yes. Yeah, like Jeff Bezos, all of these people. And then to have Taylor and Travis who were like the hit of the festival side stage, that's a, I gotta be a really proud moment. Yeah. yeah. No, it was really cool to be there and to see it. He was freaking out before. And I didn't even realize when I said it, I'm like trying to hype him up. And then I realized that the way I said it might have put more pressure on him. Cause I was like, dude, I go, other than main stage, this is literally the biggest part of Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure. I was like, I was like, I'm so proud like, of you. Like if you fuck like, this up, your entire <laughs> career is I mean, over. it's over after tonight. Yeah. I mean, if it doesn't go well. Did he start, Nobody will hire did you Did he again? do the thing that he does? It, did he play the Vanderpump Rules theme at any no, point? No, he started with Backstreet Boys. Okay, smart. And, yeah, I got a video of that. I don't know how much music we can play on the podcast, but maybe for the video I can pop up a little so bit So no of good as gold, no Screamo version, no, so they, no apples? They didn't allow any of that. I think he maybe had to get his set list approved because we had asked, like, oh, are you going to play a little bit of, like, Allie's Girls Girl? And she was like, oh, no, they won't allow that. So I don't know if they just said, like, they didn't want anything Vanderpump or... Whatever, but yeah, so he opened it up with Backstreet Boys. Like it started, it's like the James Kennedy experience or whatever, like the talking part. Yeah. And then it went into everybody and it was so good. It was, I remember seeing him last at BravoCon and it was wild because Schwartz, Jax was there. Yeah. Jax and Schwartz were there and I just thought, how tables can turn. Like if you just wait it out, you work hard, you keep your <laughs> right? head down. Jax used to rail, like make fun of that dude forever. And then to have this sold out crowd yeah. at BravoCon, I was just, it was it was really wild to see. Yeah. I saw that, wait, were Taylor Swift and Teresa Judice hanging out? Well, I think that they were, were they next in the to each other. Area, they were right? in the same yeah. VIP okay. area. And they got a picture together. What I think Louis was like, can you take a picture with yeah. my wife? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And like, like that kind of Louis way. But I don't think it was like, I'm a fan of you. I'm a fan of you. And no. yeah. it was a quick pick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Taylor looked like she was having a 
good time. Yeah, I mean, she said she was, the lip reader said, I'm wasted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wait, spinning. Yeah. We needed that lip reader for the Tom Sandoval Raquel conversation um, outside of mm-hmm. Saddle Ranch. I was like, we had that video. Oh, the like, Jamie one, yeah. The Jamie one. Um, it would be great if the lip reader was like, uh, it was like, I love this Smirnoff ice. I can't stop drinking it. Yeah. Smirnoff number 21. That is my shit. I stand by that. Wait, but so. are we allowed to ask how your Coachella besides the Smirnoff was? Because this is the deal. Sorry to like, we see the show, but the show to me now is almost secondhand with the show outside of the show, yeah. which involves your podcast, all of the cast podcasts, everybody's Instagram. It's like, there's so much involved now. So I'm at home with my newly fresh LASIK eyes watching like, oh my God, is Ariana and Sheena talking? Is Lala and Sheena? Like, it just seems like our cameras up at Coachella. Like, are you guys filming for season 12? Because it seems like we want to put drama on every moment you guys are involved in. Right. Well, I'm always vlogging. So there's always that. That'll be coming soon. I went both days with Lala and then... Friday night, we went to the nylon party. Saturday, we went to Neon Carnival. She didn't go to those. Once the festival was done, we went back to our friend Will and Elaine's house. She drove back to Palm Springs, and then we went to the after parties. So I was with her pretty much the whole time. But then at Neon, I did see Ariana and Dan for not that long. They were only at James's table for maybe 30 minutes of his set. But yeah, I hung out with them for a little bit. I didn't run into anyone else, though, the entire time. It was kind of just like we were with our group, ran into Lance Bass. That was fun. Bumped into him. And I kept running into Schwartz out of the whole festival. He's dressed. You ready for another kiss? Such a weirdo. Okay. He has a hoodie like all the way up, like a hat or a beanie under the hoodie, black glasses. He just looked like this like weirdo just in the crowd. (laughs) We looked back. Lala goes, is that Schwartz again? We just like kept running into him. He was like trying to be inconspicuous, but it was so obvious. Yeah. Once you knew what he looked like. Yeah. And he's tall. And he was there with his girlfriend, right? Yeah. And her best friend. And I'm like, Yo, is this like a thruple situation? Oh, God. Never but know. then I go, no, because here me and Lala are with Brock and it was the three of us also. So I was like, okay, maybe it's just a situation like that. <laughs> but I felt bad because Lala was like, Sheena, she's like, ever since you said that on the show, she goes, now I worry if like Brock walks me to the bathroom or something people are thinking and like, oh, look, it's Lala and Brock. And I'm like, but it's because of those people that even put it in my head. And I'm sorry that then I said it on the show, but... But we also know you're going to, I mean, if you go by the previews for the season, you there's a big scene yeah. that's going to happen Still where coming. you yell at Sandoval of like, the, the reason why I'm freaking out is because of what you did. Yes. Um, and, you know, that's yet to come. Yeah. So I'm like, it just, Sandoval provoked me and I said it and I'm sorry I said it, but it's just, it's part of my OCD and my intrusive thoughts and like my rational brain knows that would never happen, but there's still that tiny little voice that's like, but what if? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, no. And it was even, what was more funny was we're all piling in the car. And at one point we're trying to like get Lala to scoot over to get all the way in the back seat. And so she like ends up on Brock's lap. And I was like, oh my God, roll down the window. I was like, <laughs> if someone sees like Lala on Brock's lap, it's, I'm trying to like scoot by and then we're all getting yeah. in our seats. At Dumois. Yeah, exactly. Guess what I just saw. Yeah. But so now it's just like, it's a joke. But... Yeah, anyway. But, I mean, you had a good time. We had the best time. So, Sublime's lead singer is now The The Sun, which was so cool sad crazy it was just like so many different emotions Mm -hmm. to see that because right when the performance started he played a video and he said how he's now the age that his dad was when he died and he was a baby he was like one or two when his dad died and now he's the lead singer with his dad's band and he was incredible that is the only set that i got there I had two minutes to spare. I had to pee so bad. I was like, nope, not peeing, not missing the first song. And I watched that in its entirety. And it was such a throwback, just as like a kid in the 90s. Dumois saw Sheena <laughs> pee herself during Sublime set. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Needed one of Summer's pull-ups. <laughs> oh I wish I loved music that much. I just you don't. You do, don't you? I, I, do, I, I we, You will never catch me at a festival. I mean, oh, it's, it's just, so magic. It really, uh, Like, people like to crap on it a lot and like, I was watching from the couch to Couchella and but what I'm saying, like people are like, oh, the audiences are weak. You know, that doesn't really speak to it. And then you see a lot of influencer stuff, but it really is just the atmosphere is so magical. And if you love music, it's just 
everything, every type of music yeah. that you could possibly want. I have nothing but good memories of every year that I've gone just with all your friends. And it's just that time to check in. And I really miss that. My knees don't miss it, but I miss it. And watching, I mean, no doubt, slayed it. Incredible. I, didn't, I wasn't even excited for it. And I was like, this is really blowing no. me away. Really? That would have been the one I was most excited well, like, about. No, yeah, listen, same. you forget how many songs like you grew up with. But then I was like, ah. And then I watched it. I was like, dude, she's 55 doing push-ups. Is at she the 55? End of her, she's 55 years old. And they wow. all they I gotta get my life together. They didn't miss a beat. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, that's no, it. she was doing push-ups. Like no, like at the end of it the was set. incredible. Well, her show and I went to see her show in Vegas and she was amazing. And it's not yeah. no doubt it's just her, but I knew she would. Perf- I mean, that oh, performance yeah. is amazing. That yeah. was what I was most looking forward to. Then when I saw Sublime on the lineup, I was like, wait, what? So those were my two. You know, just like '90s throwback. Tragic Kingdom was literally my first album, Everything. first CD I ever bought. So to be able to see, no doubt. And Sublime was well, so Well, Live cool. Through This is really my album whole. But oh, well. after that tragic kingdom. I mean, you yeah. see Court- Courtney Love today <laughs> coming down on Taylor Swift saying she's no. like, oh, she's a nobody. Like, <gasps> uh, she's good, but like, she's not special. I'm a Courtney Love stan. She can do no wrong. Courtney Love is the right <laughs> Azalea Banks. Like, she literally is out there. So I'm like, why are you doing this, Courtney? By the way, Celebrity Skin is an amazing album. Oh, yeah. Like, I love that album. But it's wild when people pick fights, not... They say things that are like, oh, this isn't going to be good. Right. Like, not good can't come from this. I know, but I feel like she's also, she kind of did it a little bit with Olivia Rodrigo, too. I think she knows, like, the audience that she can test to sort of be like, just know that I'm the queen and I can say whatever I want. Mm. <laughs> that was the one part of the No Doubt set that I missed because I had to pee. And Brock was like, they're on for another 45 minutes. He's like, Sheena, just go. You're going to miss one song. I missed Olivia Rodrigo coming oh. out. That's when I peed. I was like, damn Sheena it. Sheena in a porta potty <laughs> trying to get out and like. Ugh. I was in a porta potty. I, was, I stayed so hydrated because I didn't want to be hungover or tired. Like I was just looking forward to the whole weekend and ending it. We had this nice Dove event. It was like a wellness, like cold plunge and sauna IVs and whatnot. So I just wanted to still feel energized for the whole weekend. And I stayed so damn hydrated that I have never spent so much time in a porta potty. It was so annoying. I was like, God damn it, I have to pee again. And I'm like, I'm not drinking anymore. I would rather be dehydrated than have to go in there. Yeah. One more time. I'm so hungover. I had so many chili espresso martinis last night. (laughs) Can After we talk I saw about that? An ad, uh, yesterday. <laughs> so that I saw another one that got posted today about the but in reality we're bartenders. Did you see that one? Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Okay, so they have a couple different commercials like going around right now. But let me tell you, this was such a full circle. Another full circle moment for me because I used to work at Chili's when I was in college. <laughs> So before I was even legal to drink, I worked at Chili's. I remember going in right after I turned 21 to have my first drink. I had the Presidente Margarita because I'm Mm. like, I've been serving them for two years, but now I can finally legally drink one. Did you have lots of flair? Yes. Oh my God. (laughs) Sheena flair. Wait, do do we have a photo? You have to have a photo of you in a Chili's uniform. Honestly, I don't know because back then this is like, I don't even know if I had a trio. There was no Blackberry. I mean, this was... 2004. Uh, simpler Circa, time. like, I think I worked there, like, 04 to 06-ish. Okay. But at, um, there was this event called Chain Fest that was back in December yes. in Hollywood. And mm-hmm. they had a bunch of different chain restaurants that had, like, a Michelin star chef come in and make one of their items into just a five-star version. And so I run into the people from Chili's. And they come up to me and they're like, oh, my God, like, we're so excited to work with you soon. This and that. And I'm like, huh? And they're like, oh, you haven't heard? And they're like, yeah, we've been internally talking and we want to do a campaign with you for our margarita of the month. And I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, do you guys know that I used to work at Chili's? And they're like, yeah, that's why we want to work with you. I'm like, and I did a Chili's commercial back in like 2008 or nine. So to now such a full circle moment get to work with them in this way they were like we want to do a campaign with you and they go if you want another cast member like let us know who you would want to be in it so i start thinking and i'm like well it's if it's for like a margarita it ended up being an espresso martini but still with tequila 
obviously makes sense to pick Katie yeah. to be a part of this campaign for me. Yeah. And I have to say, I'm going this week to a Chili's to see the little caddy stand. Oh, on well, you guys are on like the... We're on across the country. Oh, my God. My friend was in Idaho yesterday and sent me a photo. And I'm like, you know what? This is a really cool moment, despite where Katie and I's friendship may be or go, you know, on that roller coaster that we've been on. For her and I to start this show together, to be servers, to still be on this show together, the only two OG girls, and to get to partner with a brand and a restaurant we love so much together, like... Any of the bullshit aside, I'm like, this is really fucking cool. That is so. cool. It is cool. That's why, like, when I, I was watching an interview with you guys, and I was like, is this a hostage situation? Because I was like, <laughs> are you guys like, well, that's what I got. I want people to lean into that, like, kind of happiness and, like, all of this. And it just, that's my worry as, like, an Uber fan. Yeah. Is that, like, oh, man, do you guys, like, this is really cool stuff. Like, lean into all of this. Like, this should be good vibes for all the ladies right now. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like, you know, if this was... Uh, even just a few months ago when they approached me with this campaign, I would have picked Ariana. You know, she's the bartender. That's my bestie. But I was like, she's on Broadway. And Margarita, Katie, Tequila Katie. I'm like, this just makes sense. Yeah, and Lala, sober lifestyle. So that wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually, Katie has really good deadpan humor. Like, I I don't feel like (laughs) we see it as much. No, like, I still, I'm using, like, I'm going to eat a leather jacket. Like, just really bizarre, (laughs) like, little things that make me laugh that she'll say. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's pretty cool. So for those of you who like chilies, go check out the new Chili's Espresso Martini. It's got tequila. It's got agave. It's got espresso. It's so bomb. And then it has it's finished with a hint of um, Captain Morgan. So they're like, go ahead. Because I've been drinking espresso martinis with tequila for a while. But like a lot of people haven't been doing that. Yeah. No, so I didn't fact, even know it was a thing. It's my it, favorite drink. It is. It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. It's like awake, awake, tequila mm-hmm. and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get your ass slammed yeah. into the ground. Like. Have you ever heard of a defibrillator? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to need one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a when you do a shot of, for those who don't know, a shot of tequila and chase it. Oh, I, thought a shot of no, I thought you meant no. like literally on your chest. No, with a no. That's a real wake you up. Oh, also, we okay. were doing well, those in Mexico. You, well, how do you make that? Dep- so you just have a shot of tequila, but then you also have a shot of espresso that you chase uh, it with. Oh, OK. And you're like, bam, awake. OK. Did you do any of that at Coachella? No, oh, I probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will be right back. Get a taste of M, a hot new collection of craveable intimates from Made in Form, a brand with a whole lot of history. They've been around since the very first bras, and now they're bringing you a new kind of classic, the chicest basics you've ever seen. If you've seen my Instagram, you know this is what I've been wearing all around my new house. And if you haven't seen it, go to my Instagram right now and check it out. M is a collection from Made in Form. It's a brand with 100 years of innovation and category leadership. They basically wrote the book on bras, and M is the next juicy chapter. Now, believe me when I say this, you have to feel it to believe it because these fabrics are so buttery soft, they feel way more expensive than they actually are. It's great style that will not break the bank on-trend designs made from stretchy, comfy fabrics in incredible colors. And my favorite part is M can be worn as innerwear or outerwear. You can style it to your taste, create looks that serve for all to see or none. So I have some of the bra tops that I also wear as a crop top. And I love that if it's a cold day, I can throw a hoodie on over it. And if it's a hot day, I can take the hoodie off and have it on as a crop top. Visit MadeInform.com and use code SHEENA20 at checkout for 20% off your first purchase. That's M-A-I-D-E-N-F-O-R-M.com. Use code SHEENA20 for 20% off your first order. And now let's say hello to your IRL makeup filter in a bottle. Yes, I am talking to you again about the new CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. This is all I have been wearing for months now. Sometimes, depending on my tan, I will mix a couple of the shades together. Right now, I'm a solid medium because I've got a nice little tan going, but you can mix it with the light one, whichever you need to match your tone. It is a skincare makeup hybrid, and it makes your skin look plump, refreshed, more youthful, 
perfect for someone my age. They have developed this using micro droplet technology. So it's this refreshing formula that provides an instant burst of hydration. Forget this up to 24 hours. You won't find this formula in any other drugstore brand. You can feel free to compare it to like a $70 brand. This is one of my favorite things to put on my face because it has a skin like finish. So it leaves a radiant bare skin filter effect. You don't need to swipe for that Paris filter. This leaves your complexion looking plump, refreshed, more youthful. It's available in eight adaptable shades to complement all skin tones. And what I also love is it's light enough to wear during the day, but it's also great for a night out, an event. I have been wearing this morning, afternoon, and night. I'm wearing it right now on this podcast. For those of you watching this video, only from Easy Breezy Beautiful Cover Girl. And we're back. So this week we had another good Vanderpump Rules episode that... I watched weeks ago preparing for the reunion and I had to refresh myself. I'm like, okay, wait, what's on this week? Because now they just all kind of blend. But this was a big one for my music. We got the music video, Apples. But can we just talk about Tom and James for a minute? Amazing. (laughs) Truly an amazing scene. Yeah. So we see the response to Raquel's interview on Bethany's podcast play now. And Tom hears Raquel say that she never loved him. Cut to Tom's argument with James over who Raquel loved more. (laughs) And Tom saying that Raquel said she gave James the no drinking ultimatum, thinking he couldn't do it. James bringing up Raquel's interview on the Bethany podcast, saying she never loved Tom. It's like, okay, what are... Your thoughts here? Well, first, he's sitting, Tom is sitting there in a shirt that says dipped out. So I'm like already like, I can't, I can't even take you, take you seriously. I mean, he has a, a larger stage production mm. than no doubt did at Coachella. Like he's literally <laughs> practicing in this warehouse facility, complaining about money with in ears, the shirt, the aloe hat, all, everything. It was like, do you see the video production in the background? Huge. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it was a really weird scene to watch back again because it's like, okay, this was James's fiance. This was Tom's mistress, who he was never really with publicly, nor exclusively, you know, and then I just, is there any comparison? I mean, it's weird because, you know, James is coming into it and he's very much like his ego has to take a hit because here's the guy (laughs) standing in front of him who was like banging his fiance. So he has to get out like, yeah, but it's clear she was never in love with you, which of course strikes a nerve with Sandoval and he has to kind of prove that it was the weirdest dick measuring contest yeah. I've ever seen. He was like, I think it was just a fuck fest. Yeah. He's like, no, dude, we talked for five hours sometimes. No, a sex was a very small part of it. And I was like, I cannot believe we are arguing about this. And the band's right over there just watching this whole thing. And I kept going back and forth. I felt, I'm so confused too because even in this episode, Sam's like, I would have done anything for her. It's like, yeah, man, you cheated on your nine-year relationship. Like, we, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, understand, we but we're supposed to feel bad for you. And DJ James Kennedy's trying to deal with, I mean, because that was a five-year relationship, right? Or how long? Yeah, yeah. I think they were together at least five years. And it, it's just bizarre. And then to have, like, the, you know, the Bethany Frankel of it all <laughs> to, like, you know, I love the meta. And we're actually yeah. talking about these things that are actually happening But it's weird to just imagine Sandoval listening to this podcast. I wanted him to complain about the amount of ad breaks in there. It's like, I can't believe this many ads. It's not enough content, dude. But it was uh, was just so weird. It was. And, like, it was also weird that James came into the situation. Well, he was like, oh, you know, he wants me to open up for him. El Rey is a pretty big venue. And by the end of it, he's like, fuck your venue. I don't need this. It's too small for me. One day Taylor Swift will be making out at one of my shows. (laughs) But I do, I think it's interesting, though, too, that, and I wonder how Ariana feels, like, the fact that he is trying to mend this relationship. He doesn't. He leaves and Mm -hmm. completely is like, fuck this. But, like, he is going into it trying to mend it. I wonder how she feels. I mean, exactly. I mean, I think if you look at this season, which I think a lot of people are, through that lens of this really bad thing happened, uh, and Ariana is the focus of that, even though it's affected the entire group, Mm -hmm. I would imagine watching this back half of the season, even though I think it's gotten more entertaining, 
if I was her, sometimes I would be like, are you, I, I feel like it would kind of rock you again and again, because now it just loosely talked about like, no, I loved her crazy and she <laughs> hurt me. Now we're supposed to feel bad for Sandoval. I know. Instead yeah. of like, now it's on Raquel completely. Just like, I mean, it's, us guys, we're idiots, honestly. Like the Joe Schwartz relationship. You we're mean finding Kaylee, out more about Kylie, that. what the fuck Kaylee, is her name? Yeah. Well, and that, you know, we find out more that she comes out at the reunion. I always forget that Chena was at the reunion. I'm like, hey, Sheena, did you know she actually comes out at the reunion? Well, Can you believe yeah, it? So you, you get ready for it because it's going to be crazy. By the way, is it true that Summer Moon comes out and yells at Tom for blocking on How, Instagram? Did that get out? <gasps> for real? <laughs> Oh my God, I was like, oh my God, that's my dream come true. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it, the whole thing is weird, but I just sometimes, I worry about Ariana because at the end of the day, going back to last week's episode, the, the law, and just to be honest mm -hmm. with you, because I know you personally, and I feel like your heart is in it. I feel like you genuinely are at these people wanting to be friends with everybody. That's how it feels. Mm -hmm. I'm confused as anything with the Lala of it all. And I know that's your BFF, but like, you, you know, like the holding and crying of our, she finally cries and you guys are like there. And then sometimes I just don't understand in the talking head. I would feel if I watched that, if I was Ariana, how does that not hurt? And then to see Sandoval, you know, talk yeah. also about, even if you get your dreams like Broadway and yeah. a lot of sponsorships, I would imagine I would feel hard to feel that I could be close to anybody. I, I don't know if I would, and I have not talked to her or mm -hmm. anything, but I would sometimes be worried, like, who can I trust? Because it's all content at a certain point. Yeah, no, I understand that point of view. That makes sense. And I feel like all of us feel that way at times, especially post scandal. It's like, who can we trust? Who is going to screw us over? Who is going to be loyal to us? Who is all about the clicks who, you know, cares more about this and that, because in this world, a lot of the times it's everyone out for themselves. It's not like a family, like you would want it to be, you know, Jersey Shore, we're all going to band together. That is not Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, you guys don't have Sunday dinners. But like I <laughs> the moment I knew you really cared about her was when you went to her house to help her clean up. Because the only people who have ever loved me are the <laughs> ones who know that I can be a hoarder slob <laughs> and I trust enough to let into my space <laughs> To help me, and also I want a friend like you. That's like, I mean, like, can you put my stuff away? Like, she's finding food, like, yeah. like perishables. I was just like, girl. Been there for, I mean, that is the one thing I will say. It's like it seems like a messy place. It's yeah, and, but you know, I'm I'm pro mess, but you know, my life is one, and I like it. But it is funny. Like, I want more of that. But I just that's the thing that's frustrating is as a fan, I'm like, man, this to me was an easy layup. You guys all band together like sister to the traveling pants and go against these guys, and. I don't know. Like, I know Lala is, so, she to me is going to have a career forever. Mm -hmm. Like, period. Like, she is so watchable, viewable. But sometimes I feel like, are these producer moves or are these from Lala's heart? Because I feel like you shoot from the hip. You shoot from your heart, for better or worse. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like Bites I'm just confused. I'm, well, I'm confused about the moves sometimes. I feel like, are these reality show moves or is this really how she feels? No, it's definitely really how she feels. And I do think by the time you see the finale and the reunion, you're going to understand more of how she feels and understand her frustration. Because at the end of the day, we also have to remember that our life is our job and our job is our life. And there's not really any separating that. So something happens like something. It's hard. It's really hard, but it it wasn't an easy season for us to film, you know? It was very difficult to do our jobs. But I mean, honestly, when we talked about this, like going to the next season, like last year, we asked for this. Like, at least I, I remember us having this conversation. We wanted the women to like what their experience was going to be after this, good or bad. Because I don't, I actually want to see the realness because I know there is, there can be jealousy, there can be anger, there can be resentment. And so I I appreciate that we're seeing that personally. I think just sometimes I don't understand what leads, what has led to that. Like sometimes I don't see it exactly. Like I understand what, I understand the basic overall moves, but I'm just sitting there like, at the end of the day, we have a scene where Lala almost apologizes to Tom Sandoval for being triggered by her past. I'm like, in what world would Lala ever yeah. have to sit in Tom Sandoval's backyard and apologize yeah. to him? Like, to me, that was the weirdest scene of the season for me personally as a fan. Because I was like, 
Lala does not owe him an apology at all. No, but I think it wasn't even necessarily her apologizing to him. I think she was kind of apologizing for herself and how she has projected at times because everyone says, you know, that she will make things about herself where she tries to take a situation and be like, oh, but my experience, like Katie was on her all season for her doing this. And as someone who understands Lala and also tends to, you know, people think make it about me. I'm like, I'm just trying to relate with people. Even when I do this podcast and I chime in after someone says something, it's like, well, you just let them talk. And I'm like, we're having a conversation. So with this season, I feel like Lala had a lot of those moments where she's comparing, you know, a situation that she was in where her man didn't just cheat on her with her best friend. He has oh, done way heinous different. things. And she had a baby and she left that house and left that situation with just whatever she could take and fit in the car and left. And so for her to go through all of that and feel like she didn't really get any sympathy from the group and now everyone is just, you know, so team Ariana, I think for her, it's not even a jealousy thing. It's just like, damn, it would have been nice if I had that same support from the group and the world. Do you agree with Katie in any way, though, that like she she was saying how you want to show your softness, but I feel like you're giving your softness to the wrong people. Do you think do you agree with that or no? Do you think that Lala was giving softness to everybody and Katie just wasn't seeing no, it? No, I think Lala was trying to give softness to everyone. She was also trying to give some tough love and good advice and just trying to be like, look, I've been in a similar situation, worse in some aspects, different in others. But here's what I did. Here's what helped me heal. And that was what we were trying to do at the end of the day with Ariana was just like when I was talking to her, I'm like, but don't you think, you know, you need to stay in therapy, get out of the house, like do these things to help you start healing. You can make all of the money in the world. That doesn't mean you're going to be happy. You could have oh. the most amazing boyfriend in the world. It doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be happy in every aspect. And so I felt like we really were just trying to help her in that sense. And maybe the delivery wasn't always perfect well, but sometimes life moves so fast that like you know uh you know my mom passed away seven months ago i'm i had one of the worst weekends of my life this weekend like things are on not like a timetable mm -hmm. and i do wonder sometimes I'm like oh man she's done with chicago she's done with this i do sometimes wonder man like there is because that's a really messed up thing mm -hmm. to happen and then in the public scale it was yeah i do wonder how somebody just even from personal experience with traumatic events how you do keep going forward and keeping your head up and are you doing therapy and things like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, those are interesting questions. I just know we have the show to go by, the narrative, but then we have all of these podcasts and Reddit threads and all of this stuff. So we piece all of this together and I'm just trying to see how we end up at the day where Lala is, I look differently on everybody now. Uh, I, you know, I watched the, everybody watches the last seven episodes at once, you guys, or mm -hmm. that's what Andy Cohen said. Yeah. So I'm like, man, if you're Ariana and you watch some of the things that Lala she said. She didn't watch talking, any of it. She didn't watch any of wow. it. She didn't watch the season Because I was like, if she watched it, I would go in. No. Like just losing my mind. No. But it's so hard, even as the audience, we don't know the entire, we yeah. know what's presented. We don't know all the ins and outs. So I'm like, if Lala's at a 10, we know that because she did a full press tour the week after and is still doing it. It is something bad enough. And I guess that's exciting as a fan. Yeah. But then just like sometimes knowing you guys, I'm like, uh, can't we all just get on a text thread and just like go, let's <laughs> all party at Coachella together? <laughs> can I tell you, there is a group chat that all of us girls were put in by someone else. And no one responded in it. And then I text the person <laughs> who started it and I go, clearly you weren't filled in about what went down at the reunion. No one's going to respond to you in that. But like, I'll see you at the event. <laughs> was that Joe? <laughs> yeah. It was Pandora. <laughs> World Dog Day. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's what I was waiting for with uh, the sperm donor party. I was waiting for Ken Todd to stumble out of like, I can't believe I gave sperms a lot of music. I can't believe that. Like, I need more Ken Todd. You know what? I want to talk about the Lala sperm donor party, actually, because I want to give props to not only her, but also production for covering her family planning journey. Because I feel like... Families come in all shapes and sizes, and depending on 
You know, if you want to freeze your eggs, if you want to get a surrogate, if you want to adopt, if you want to get a sperm donor, there's so many different ways to bring a child into this world. But I feel like if it's not, you know, the normal, quote unquote, way, there's a lot of stigma around it. So I feel like it was very powerful for her to put this out there, knowing that the whole world could be like, what about that kid not having a dad and this and that and like all of these things. But I was Is there a lot of people like that. Because I see that, and I'm like, hell yeah, go on. Like, that I seems mean, amazing. That's, that's, I think, a normal response. And that's yeah. why I was so proud of her for putting it out there. Because there has been so much support, thankfully. But then there are well, the assholes, Lisa obviously. was even kind of like, yeah. are you sure you want to do this? Like, <laughs> Lisa does sometimes seem like she's stuck back in the 60s. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, it's not the proper way. Let Sandoval do it. Yeah. You know? like, and it's like, you don't think that Lala, who's a very intelligent woman, has thought this all the way through of what she's going to say one day to this kid, you know, but it's like, it makes me emotional because I'm like, I've watched this journey from the beginning and to see her want this so bad and make it happen and now be pregnant with her baby girl. I'm just like, fuck yeah, you did it. And you are bringing this kid into this world surrounded by so much love. I will share Brock with you. Like I we say that, you know, like I put out, but she gets the benefits. But mm-hmm. I'm like, you have so many people around you. And so I really liked that we got to see part of that journey in this episode because it just it is something that I feel like there's, you know, a stigma and around. He, every one of the the Vanderpump ladies are there to support yeah. in, in that scene. Which I loved. Yeah. I will say it surprised me that uh, Lala and Gigi from the Shaws didn't get along considering they have you similar know, sort I of... You know, I thought so too. So is it one of those things where they're too alike and that's why they don't... Oh, that's a good... Yeah, it's a great ...like point. each other? I mean, Gigi has not been kind to her for a while now, but I do know Remember they Remember Randall spoke... went on... Or she went on Randall's yes. podcast back in the day? Yeah. I'm re-watching Shaws right now and I forgot yeah. just how intense so, that show so is. So good. Yeah. Oh, I missed that show. Okay, we're going to take one more little break and then we'll be right back. The new star series, Mary and George, starring Julianne Moore and Nicholas Galitzine, tells a story almost too outrageous to be true, but shockingly, it is. Critics are calling this sexy, witty, and darkly rewarding and also have said you won't be able to tear your eyes away. With next to nothing to her name and looking to elevate her social standing, Mary Villers sets her handsome and charming son George on the path to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. Trust me, you have never seen a mother-son duo like this before. This show is full of wit, scandal, something this audacious and sexy is as genre-bending as it gets. You won't be able to look away. Watch Mary and George only on Stars and the Stars app. Okay, so coming back to the sperm donor party, I wanted to ask you, if you were going through this process, what would you look for in a sperm or egg donor? Like, what would be the important things to you for that selection? Honestly, height, because I am too short, <laughs> and like I, I just want to be like 5'8", and I just want to give my kid like a chance just to be like a little bit taller than me. Yeah, okay. Um, other than that, like, I'm pretty open. Like, I... I think that I would actually would love to have like a very biracial kid, like very like, you know, like lots of background. You don't know what they're made up of. Who cares? Yeah. Like be kind of cool. I th- this sounds so base, but I, I really would just a beautiful kid, like somebody that was just gorgeous. Like I was so insecure growing up and still am. But like I would just love to know like just like good because beautiful people do like seem sometimes they have it much easier like i want them to be smart and funny but like it would be nice to be like yeah people are just so much more open unfortunately in this world Mm -hmm. to just great looking people i mean and lala is obviously great looking and i'm sure anybody she chooses will be but that would be really i feel like that's like setting somebody up with a college fund yeah right yeah (laughs) i loved how ali said a gpa in high school and the sun sign (laughs) (laughs) but i love it she said it like well i didn't get the sun sign it's like well we do need that don't we ali dally i was shocked when lala was like i want to have a virgo and i was like you do you want to have a Virgo? i don't know what any signs mean except for like my own taurus so i'm like none of that matters and i always can't tell if dj james kennedy is fully into it or he's just like of course ali whatever you say yes (laughs) but i do love that that this baby is going to be a virgo my daughter is also a taurus and there's just something cool about having the same sign as your daughter no am i allowed to reveal lala's baby name here (laughs) Ah, (laughs) uh, no i yeah no it 
that's where I'm fully with Lala. Like, yeah. I, I don't think anybody can be against that because it is the one thing that I think she really, truly, I don't think anybody can argue that she excels at. Yeah. So I like that journey. I hate that it's in the midst of post scandal mm -hmm. and dealing with that. Yeah. But I'm glad that that story is told. And I'm curious going into season 12, like, are we going to like be in the delivery room? Like, what what are we doing? Honestly, that is very likely that our season finale would be right around when she's giving birth. Wow. So if I need to vlog camera it, you know, I'll be in there. <laughs> Have we had a birth since like Teresa Judah? Like, no, I mean, I'm, and I'm even thinking about like, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians. We had Courtney, remember, Courtney. when like just yeah. yanking it out. She pulled the baby out herself. Yeah. Uh, that, that would be great. Lala ends the finale just by <laughs> yanking her baby or Virgo baby out. Right, because does she want to have like a water? She seems like she would want to have a water birth. I'm, By the way, she, you know, I love it. She knows like, exactly how she's like. Why? She's like, I'm part. Me and Brock are part of the pregnancy yeah. plan. Uh, it's at the cold plunge place I'm where Sandoval pool leg. plunged earlier. <laughs> it's gonna be in Sandoval's pool yeah. where the pool parties are. Yeah. Uh, you go to Burning Man, dude. Speaking of Tom Sandoval, there's a moment at the end of the episode this week where I'm telling the Toms about my song Apples. Genuinely, did think Sandoval would have heard it by then. But then it's like cut to Tom's interview saying we were starting to become friends again. I'm not serious about mending our friendship. I'm profiting off his pain, cashing in on his misery, whatever he said. I'm like, well, first of all, I, I didn't write the song yesterday. Like, I've just been sitting on this gold. <laughs> I stand by that song. People can say whatever shit they want to say. It's auto-tuned. It's this. It's that. I'm like, I am expressing myself and I will not apologize for that. The song is a bop. Well, can I say one thing? I will say this. I'm just going to, I love all your music, but I do want to stand up for the Jetta girlies as a Jetta owner. No, <laughs> I used to have a Jetta no, too, actually. Here's the thing. And I, so, like, oh, I like Jetta. Like it's when the whole scandal thing went down, the first thing I said was like, oh, I'm fucked. I drive a Jetta. Everybody knows Rachel drives a Jetta. Everyone's going to be coming for Jetta people. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I should just like trade in my car. The Jetta stuff. And then it kind of, <laughs> And then it kind of went away. And then Apples comes out. And I'm like, oh, fuck, gone from like a like a Ferrari to a Jetta. And I was like, here we go. <laughs> it rhymed with Betta. Okay. But I love the scene of Sheena coming up all proud of like, you didn't hear it? This is a Jetta. And he's like, whatever, Sheena. This is really profit off my pain, dude. Profit off my yeah, pain. Like, like, you're like, wearing a dipped out shirt. I was like, profit off my pain. That's a great, great lyric. <laughs> I like this as like a Drake diss track almost. Because yeah. Drake's in like the news right now for his diss tracks. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, making music with the 27s this past year has been very therapeutic for me and just like healing in some ways. I have a couple other songs, actually three, two are written and recorded. One is halfway written, but it's like I do this for me because it makes me happy. It makes me feel empowered. It's something I genuinely enjoy doing, just having this creative aspect um, in my life. So it's like whether people listen to it, love it, hate it, I really don't care. I'm like, Tom, you're going to come around to this song one day because it's a fucking bop. So well, just know that your stream. Good as Gold signed um, <laughs> album is going into Kiki's Playhouse. Yes. Yay. I, I, I'm very, as I'm decorating, I'm like, where am I going to frame this? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the, are the other song names like Sir Alleyway? Like, what are the other songs? Like, it would be great if each song, oh, you're smiling, so it obviously it's does. It's not Sir Alleyway. But it's something. There is one called Dead to Me. <laughs> oh, my God. And the last one I'm not going to reveal yet because it will be the self, the title of the EP as well. Is it Rotten Hell, Jax? How did you know? <gasps> So, like, this is what I love, and I think this is why you probably get along with Teddy. You kind of lean into, like, what people say about oh, yeah. you. But, like, do you, like, does it hurt? Like, initially, does it hurt? Or at some point, did it just stop hurting? No, at this point, it doesn't. The only things that hurt, honestly, are when I see my friends saying shit on the show, and the after show, behind my back. Like, those things hurt more than some random troll on Instagram. Oh, that, that doesn't bother show, me. Man. That's been brutal. Because yeah. also, I'm like... Here's the thing. Katie and I, the day that that was filmed, I thought we were perfectly fine. I thought everything, we were in a good place. And so then to see her digs, Ariana's giggles, and knowing that Katie and I just hung out a week or two prior at her holiday party, and then three weeks later, I'm at her birthday dinner. It was just like, so you're saying all of this shit about me while acting like you're my friend to my face. And that is more hurtful 
than any troll on Instagram saying the dumb shit that they say. That doesn't bother me. But what's hard about that, though, is that you have 11 seasons, you know, notwithstanding all of the things that aren't filmed, 11 seasons of just barbs back and forth, like jabs back and forth. There is so much. And that's why it's interesting when Schwartz is like, I want to get the gang back together. Is this really a gang at this point? Would you recommend, like, you know, sometimes like this isn't what friends usually all do together. You guys are in such a weird science experiment where like, I mean, like last week listening to your podcast and hearing you talk about Jax and hearing you get emotional. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is wild. Like you went and like supported his bar and at the Valley. And then, you know, th that's the thing is like those things hurt again and again. And I imagine you get desensitized to it, but still those things can really hurt. But you have 11 seasons of that. Yeah. It's wild. This whole life is wild with, yeah, all of it. That's why it's interesting to hear Brock on the show. I'll be like, <laughs> no, this is how it really is. And you're like, I'm like, oh man, stay out of this, dude. Just like put the topsoil in the house and like, you know. He's doing that right now. Oh, that was so <laughs> Andy. I, I love those videos. I was talking about it on Jeff. I was, so good. Those videos, I, because I am not handy at all. I'm just yeah. like, how you can do all this? Yeah. yeah, it's like the new ASMR. It's like just watching someone like make a house pretty. I'm like, this is I'm into this. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of houses, at least when Ariana Foley is back in L.A., she has a new house to go to. Mm -hmm. Just going to say that. Very happy about that. All right. To wrap it up, I thought we could just talk about a funny little non VPR topic. So I saw a video online this week of a woman detailing her horror story and planning her child's birthday party. And if you heard my podcast last week, you know that it's been very difficult for me to plan my own child's birthday party because there's a capacity of adults at the place we're doing it at. And I'm like, never again, never again. I'm just going to have the 150 person party forever because it's done a number on me. But so this woman created an evite to send to her invitees. And I guess somehow when she uploaded her contacts, it sent the invite to all 500 contacts in her phone. So her boss, her friends she doesn't speak to anymore, someone she bought an item off Craigslist, former romantic partners, <laughs> etc. But here's the thing, to make matters worse, she <laughs> addressed each invitee as who, how they were in her contacts. So there was one that was, Jess hit her car in parking lot. <laughs> so my question to wrap this up is, how do you store people in your phone? Because I know I'm guilty of doing that kind of stuff too, especially single Sheena. Mm -hmm. You have some drinks you got to put down, what they're wearing or where you met them. Mm -hmm. How do you keep people in your phone? I mean, the guy that I ended up dating for nine years, he was in my phone um, as like, I think it, I used to call him, how was it? It was like B-O-D or something like big old dick or something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> They thought it wasn't SOD. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, no, I, I'm really lazy. I sometimes just don't put them in at all. Like I'll okay, be, Brock. And then I'll like have to like scroll up to like figure yeah. out who this is. And so that's, yeah. That or, is, that's got to be just such a dude thing because Brock does the same thing. And he's like, I don't know who this is texting me. And I'm like, how do you save the number? Yeah. It's not that hard. It takes two seconds. Oh, I've made horrible mistakes not saving. Like, <laughs> that I got feels like F-boy behavior. Sorry, yeah. Ryan. I, 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 <laughs> Oh, totally. I usually, whenever, however I meet someone, I like to keep it that way. But then if I become super close with them, like eventually I'm like, okay, I'll add your proper last name. But like my friend Elaine, for example, for like two years, she was Elaine Newport Yacht with a yacht emoji. <laughs> so when I met her, Brock and I were chartering one of her yachts and we did a little dinner cruise. And so I was like, oh, Elaine Newport Yacht. But I'm like, this is one of my closest friends now. Like I'm going to put you in as Elaine Ratner. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, there's something fun about like, this is how I met you. Yeah. And it's just kind of nostalgic. Well, that's what now the people that you track their location do you have their full names in there or is that code names as well? 
No, I'm pretty sure those are mostly full. And I also just want to add, I said this on Watch What Happens Live. I even just got another one this morning. People are just literally offering me their location. I was on I was on Up and Adam Live and I said, send 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 Sheena your he location did. right now. He's like, I did. I wasn't brave enough to do it because I was like, oh, she's just going to block me. But uh, I was like, do it. But I imagine you've been like inundated with people sharing so their locations. So many people. I'm like, when Andy asked me, he's like, oh, I'm sure it's less now, right? And I go, quite the opposite. That's I've had amazing. more people send it to me. And so, you know, I That's love- a good like cameo. Like, you know, for like $80, uh, you can give Sheena yeah. your location. <laughs> At a night, she can just watch you. I love it. Well, thank you guys for getting into some more Hot Topic shenanigans with me. Yet again, always a good time with you. Please tell everyone where to find you. Uh, the show is So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey on Betches Media. I sometimes uh, am on Jeff Lewis on Sirius now, but follow So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey on Instagram. We got a Patreon as well. But yeah, just go to the Instagram. Everything's there, but just check it out. Subscribe to Pop Crime if you want to hear my pop culture true crime takes. Obviously, listen to me on Sirius XM, Reality Check, every Monday, sometimes Thursday. And follow me on the, the Talk of Shame and TikTok on Instagram. Hell yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Apples. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye.